What is the oldest rock on our planet? Do we have one? How we find it? Where? How old the rocks that are floating on the surface of our planet? Let's talk about that. Our Earth formed about 4.6 billion years ago. Formation of the Earth was a long period with intense environment on its surface involving extreme pressures, temperature that no longer exist at the surface. First several hundred million years of geological history of our planet, mineral and rock materials were repeatedly reworked, recycled, moved around, melted again, almost as soon as it was, has been formed. And as a result, none of them have survived. However, geologists tried so hard to find the oldest rock on our planet, correctly dated, and reconstruct the conditions at that time. Fortunately for us, there are places on our planet, specifically on continents, where we can find very old rocks which are more than 2 billion years old, so almost half of the history of the planet. Places, we call them shields, which have preserved cretins with surviving fragments of the very old continents staying there, which are more than 2 billion years old. Occasionally these places are exposed to the surface, but usually they covered with thick layer of sedimentary and other reworked rocks that collected throughout the millions of years. And still, those rocks that we can find in those places, they will be very much altered and changed since they were formed. For example, continents were moving towards each other and then apart again, and they will constantly apply pressure and temperature on those rocks, even though they preserved, and change their composition, they might remelt again, and change the atomic composition, which is so important for us to know if we want to date it. For example, the increased temperatures associated with burial and transformation deep within the crust can reset the ratios of different radioactive isotopes within a rock. And it's left geologists without the valuable tool for assessing the age of the rocks. And many of those ancient rocks have been through the cycles of repeated phases of metamorphism, See my one very first video is the process when the rock's been squashed, melted by pressure and temperatures. Chances of finding relatively unaltered and truly ancient rocks is very, very small. We talked before about continental drift and tectonic plates. You understand that looking for the oldest rocks on the bottom of the ocean, it's useless. The ocean is very young, crust on the surface, and it's formed about 250 million years ago, the oldest. So there's no point to looking for any ancient rocks there. We're left with the continents, and if you'll be a geologist, you will look for the most ancient places in the continents. So the places like recently formed mountains, we call it origin areas, will be places you don't want to go to. You will look for the places, the most stable parts of the continents, around which the continents moving and forming. In geology, we call them shields, from the very rigid and thick structure which preserved. And we have them around North America, Europe, famous Baltic shield, which is about 2 billion years old. There's an ancient shield around India, southeastern Africa, and western Australia. This old term shield, or cretins, have been recently named. It's a large region of Precambrian rocks, for example, like a Canadian shield. Scientists discovering that these areas, cratons, they are old, very rigid, deep-seated rocks from around which the continents formed, moving around, preserving this rigid cores. They rooted down into the semi-molten mantle about 250 kilometers, so they're quite thick. They are very resistant at the bottom to the melting asthenosphere. And it was a big puzzle, a long time for geologists to understand why these cratons survived for so long time and why they haven't been melted. And recently scientists think they find the answer for that. And it seems like they persisting over billions of years on the planet is due to the protective nature of the roots, which act as toughened rigid keels around which the hotter and more mobile rocks of the surrounding asthenosphere flow. Usually that places attributed to the ancient deep-seated volcanoes. So this place is related to different types of minerals and rocks that are found only in that places, specifically like diamonds. Recently scientists find that the water content in the minerals that these roots composed of are important. So the less mineral content the water, the more rigid and resistant they are to the temperature. 
the more fluid they are and the more they're resistant to the changes around. So such the materials which in the very base of the cratons, very deficient in water, yet they, they're very stable. And the closer they come in towards the surface, the more water content, the less they're resistant to the pressure and temperatures and changes. And they have a limit as, as well to going deep into the mantle, into the asthenosphere, and it's about 250 kilometers. So luckily we have those crotons preserved around the planet, and one is a very famous one. It's a vast shield, Canadian shield, the remnants of old landmass called Laurentia. The recent glaciation in that area, see my other videos about glaciation, helped to polish off the surface of this ancient shield and expose these rocks to the surface. And thus, in the 1980s, scientists find the rocks which are estimated to be the oldest on our planet. Thus, during the systematic mapping, Geological Survey of Canada identified some metamorphosed rocks on an island in the Acasta River, east of the Great Bear Lake. It's the Acasta Nisus outcrops, and they were containing zircon materials that offered the potential for isotopic analysis in radiometric dating. So zircon is very good minerals to date. Scientists did this, they analyzed uh, these rocks for uranium and lead isotopes without these little zircon crystals, particles. And they estimated that the minimum age, minimum it's mean it's at least as old, 3.84 billion years. Later in 1999, people start more accurately mapping those areas, those rocks, and redate them, and they find that about 4 billion years old. However, other scientists suggest that these uh, later dates could be, uh, could be not very true, not very secure, that we might be dating not the, when the rocks come out to the surface, but when they actually the rock formed under the ground when it was still semi-molten under terrain position. Since the time, since the Acasta Nice was discovered, people start looking, hunting for the oldest rocks around the planet. And one of them will find in Western Greenland as well, and of very ancient cratons, and it was dated about 3.8 billion years old as well. They will find some volcanic rocks, such as pillar lavas there. In 2001, another very old rock was found again back in the Laurentian Shield in Canada. And the geologists know that area as Nouveau-Gituk Greenstone Belt, which is lying the eastern shore of Hudson Bay in northern Quebec. Later in 2008, geologists dated it. They look for the very ancient elements in this material in that area, and they estimated new age of these old rocks about 3.8 to 2.28 billion years old. Therefore, the Nouveau-Gituk greenstones now attributed to be the ancient rocks find on the planet. However, other scientists argue maybe there's a similar age than the greenstone and previously found Acastanisis. Of course, you can imagine there's always will be the problem with how we dated these rocks where we collected sample from, is this the formation of the rock when it's come to the surface, or when it's formed underneath, and so on. But nevertheless, we can say that we have the rocks from the very first periods when the planet just was forming that time. We can assure that water was already present on our planet, and there was intensive volcanic activity that time. And some of the pieces of these older rocks stay still, on our surface of the planet. They were not yet recycled. Although they might be modified, changed by pressure and temperatures, but they're still there. And they can give us some information, very sparse, but yet information about first years of our planet. Of course, people finding the older rocks on the planet in forms of meteorites, the rocks that are falling from the space, but they'll be the topic of different discussion. One of the geologists say that this Ancient pieces of the continents which floating on our surface, which we call cratons or the shields, and the mountains that formed and removed around them, you can imagine it works like a pile of rubbish that floating on the surface of the ocean. Bigger chunk of plastic, lighter, they stay on the surface, the rubbish around them moved around, get sunk again, recycled, pushed against each other. But these solid pieces of thick plastic, they will still preserve in the middle of this junk. You can think about these cretans and all ancient pieces of the continent's shields 
like this plastic junk on the surface of the ocean, which is the oceanic crust and origins, mountains and faults which constantly get recycled. And the ancient cretans stay there, pushed to the places, squashed, changed, covered with the sediment, exposed back again by the glaciers. But they stay there for a very long time. <laughs>